So this is Wednesday, January 5th, 2022, a meeting of the Berlin Historical Commission. And let us take attendance here. Uh, we'll start with Barry Hager. Present, yep. And Elaine Wickstrom. Present. <laughs> Carl Wickstrom. Present. And Janet Woodward. I'm here. And June and myself, June Miller, I'm here, as far as I know. <laughs> so we have a quorum and we're beginning the meeting at 7.03. <clears throat> You'll have to bear with me because I also take minutes. And uh, the, okay. it's important to say that anybody that speaks at this meeting is subject to being recorded and so on. So should I state that, uh, ask Scott to show, to say that he's present or, or is that well, not you can note that. I, I was gonna say, Scott, I, I, I am here. Scott, a member present too. Yep. But not a member, okay. We just have one large, uh, agenda item, and that is to have a discussion of uh, the MPPF grant round 28. Um, and Carl and Elaine have prepared two attachments uh, that were sent to us yesterday. Yes, no, Tuesday. Monday. 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 Okay. So I'm. Um, I think I'll just start out by. Um, asking Carl and Elaine um, what their present, their current recommendation is, and if they have any comments to to preface that. Excuse me. Well, I do have some comments to preface the uh, the documents that uh, we previously distributed. Apparently, there are some uh, members of the commission that uh, believe we have. We may have violated a bureaucratic protocol by discussing this grant with the select board first prior to discussing it with the commission. Let me be clear. This is a select board grant, not a commission grant. Part of the process is to get the select board either to agree or disagree with the grant. If they agree with the grant, the next step would be, get, would be to get uh, letters of support from various people, including, which would be very important, the commission. We would obviously discuss it with the commission before we would request a, a letter of support. As citizens and taxpayers of this town, not only do we have a right, but we have a civic obligation, we believe, to be a friend of the court and bring what we believe factual information regarding the bullet house and the requirements of the grant, of the grant to the attention of the select board so they can be in a better position to make whatever decision they would uh, come up with uh, in the final analysis. Uh, and this is particularly true given there was an opportunity uh, to possibly obtain $100,000 of uh, state uh, restoration funds for a project that quite frankly has been floundering for nearly 26 years. So we believe that the action we took to go directly to the select board is uh, appropriate. Uh, with regard to the grant itself, our, our bottom line recommendation at this point, given the time that we spent in pulling this data together, which is probably close to 40 man hours, all right, in itself, is that the town we don't believe is presently prepared to go forward with the grant. So that being said, if you would agree, June, I would like to get into the first part of the presentation, which is this part here uh, with the title, uh, what are we doing with the bullet house after 26 years? Is that okay with you to go forward with that presentation? Sure. Okay. So the current does status- he, Does Elaine, right you got yours? Okay. I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Does Elaine want to uh, speak first? We've, 
we've both do, uh, worked this and um, it's a combination. So I'm gonna let him speak. He has a clearer speaking voice. So the current status of course, is that the, uh, the bullet house is on the National Register of Historic Places since 2011. Uh, the intended purpose of the house Generally speaking, is to have a museum to display Berlin artifacts and art for historical and educational purposes. Town's owned the property for 26 years. It is currently not open at, uh, for the public at this time. So as we see it, there are three options we think the board should consider, as well as ourselves. Option one, you can do nothing uh, with the building except continue to use it to store artifacts. And heating cost is gonna be on average $2,000 a year plus insurance costs plus general maintenance. There's no really schedule to that. We just continue what we're doing to use it as a warehouse basically. We don't think that's the best option of course, but it is an option. Second option would be to continue to implement the bullet house restoration plan. We refer to it as the plan. Apparently the commission approved this plan back on 1-10-2016. And it was used as part of an application on 1-11-2016 to request mitigation mm -hmm. dollars that are basically, as I understand it, no longer available or very, very limited dollars are left. And the request at that time was for 100,300 uh, for a total projected cost apparently of 202,600. Uh, I don't know if the board still believes this is the plan that should be implemented. Uh, we as a commission, since I've been on and since Janet's been on, we haven't brought this subject up to see if this is the direction the commission wants to continue going into, but that's something we can discuss later. Uh, the plan basically makes no reference to the use of the Secretary of Interior Standards for Preservation and strongly emphasizes the use of volunteers to do the required work. When I refer in the future to standards, I'll be referring to this Secretary of Interior Standards just for clarity. <clears throat> we should also, uh, if we're gonna continue on this path, implement uh, the structural and other restoration tasks as contained in the Squaw Hollow Restoration uh, Survey, uh, most of most of the uh, structural items identified in that report uh, really haven't been addressed in the plan. Uh, the cost associated with such a plan, if we continue down this path, is probably in the range of three hundred to four hundred thousand, using a general contractor. And if you want to continue using volunteers, I have no objection objection to using volunteers, provided, number one, the task is clearly defined, they have the skill to do it, they're supervised, and as a minimum, they implement the Massachusetts building codes. <clears throat> uh, taking this approach, I believe, would result in basically a 21st century remodeling job particularly with respect to the kitchen, because that's been totally removed, and not a restoration, uh, not a restoration task uh, of a historic structure. Uh, as a result of uh, the use of volunteers, um, my understanding is there have been a lot of redos over the years and redos that are still in process. Okay. Complete black backside of the uh, house has been gutted out to the studs. So we're gonna have to redo something there, whatever it is. Apparently boards from a salt shed were used for flooring. They had to be pulled up because they were containing moisture. And there's still plywood under it that may have to be ripped up as well. Apparently there was a, ro a roof replacement at one time. I don't know if we had to replace all of, all of it or part of it because it was a free roof. There's a handicap ramp in there. I haven't seen this myself, but Tim Woolheater have brought it to my attention that at the bottom of the ramp, there is a sinkhole, which should have been addressed when the ramp was put in. 
Uh, this could be disastrous for somebody coming down the ramp in a wheelchair if they hit something like that. Uh, let me see, what else do we have here? Uh, we have in the parlor section of the house, we painted half of the ceiling at one time. Uh, we put up wallpaper uh, at the same time, nice wallpaper. And, you know, we're going to be creating all kinds of dust and grime when the interior is done. We may have to readdress that at some point. Not sure there. And when Tim finishes uh, his supplement that he was still working on today, at, not today, this week, I should say, excuse me, at the Bullet House, uh, there are going to be more redos we'll be identifying at that time. Uh, with respect to the handicap ramp that's there, I can't understand why we thought that was a high priority at this point in time. Yes, that requirement certainly has to be addressed. But why did we do it at this time when we got a quarter of a million dollars worth of restoration effort structurally and, exterior, and on the exterior. Not to mention what has to be done on the inside. Uh, no consideration seemed to have been given uh, to be sympathetic with the interior of the house when that ramp was put in. Uh, it's a design of a, of a handicap ramp that you would expect to see in an institution like a hospital or something like that. Should we go to option three? I'm almost, I'm almost done option two. Thank you, Obi. just a minute if you don't mind. Okay. Because the next, part, the next part is very important. I'll stop there. But the next part, if we're gonna implement option two, the next important question is, how is it gonna be funded? So first of all, any CCAP money, any Historical, uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission monies is off the table because you have to implement the standard. Number two, the other approach would be to raise and appropriate the money. Go to town meeting in May, give the voters a warrant, ask them to come up with $400,000 or thereabouts to get a general contractor, all right, to do whatever needs to be done uh, that could probably be done in, you know, maybe an 18 to 24 month period. So I think those are the only two funding options you have if you want to continue implementing the same plan. Option three. Um, I, I have a couple of comments. Okay. Uh, one is, um, Elaine, could you give us the present balance of the mitigation fund money? Yep. Yep. Um, if I subtract the um, money we set aside for the Excuse stairs, be careful not to use the keyboard here. Don't yeah. mess things up. Okay. Um, if we uh, subtract the money we set aside for the stairs, okay, yeah, and there's about eleven thousand, a little over eleven thousand dollars left in that account. Eleven k. Let me ask. That's after we paid for the for the uh, sell the stairs the work and stuff that we've got now. Right. Right. How about how about the seven thousand? Excuse me. How about the seven hundred dollar threshold? That's 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 out of there too. That's reflected in. Yeah. Okay. So the balance is about eleven k. Yeah, just a little more. Yeah. Okay. And June, can I ask a question? Or maybe this isn't the right moment for it. No, go ahead. Um, I um, I, I'm trying to figure out how much money we have to play with right now, and the CPAP money has accumulated. In, unless I'm wrong with this. It's accumulated over the past two years. And then after the mid season, you know, summer town meeting, um, there'll be more that, that is somewhere above, I don't know, it's like 56,000. Yes, right. And, then, right. and the accumulated money is like $100,000. And I'm yeah. not saying that that's enough to do the whole project, but um, we it it's money we've, it, and I, I'm not on the, haven't been on the commission long enough to know how often we've had that much money in our pocket to work with, but probably. Jen, not. I, I will be address, I will be addressing those those numbers in, in a few minutes. I, I will oh. be addressing those. 
Does anybody, does anybody else have any information on that? Or? Well, I think Janet's yes. point is well taken. Be, I mean, she is uh, making us remember and be aware that we will have more CPAC funds should the should right. the town uh, should see the committee approve our project and and at town meeting um, we get uh, uh, a, a positive vote. Right. And we have that, that in mind. Yeah, that, that's, that's, money in works. That, yeah. that's in the second part of the presentation, folks. I'll, I'll be glad to address that when we, when we get there. Elaine I, quite, Elaine, I couldn't quite hear what you were saying. I, I'm a little we, hard of hearing. We, we, we did take that into consideration because I know there's the 56,000. Okay. And um, so it's a matter of, well, we'll talk about that after, okay? Because um, we, didn't, we didn't forget about that. The, the um, other comment I wanted to make before we go to option three is that I would like, I know that they, that uh, there's the perception that there have been some, uh, a negative perception about, at least from Carl and Elaine and maybe others uh, about what's been accomplished at the Boyd House. But I think we need to stress the positives a little more than the negatives. Well, so, so Joan, I'd be, I'd be glad to do that, but here's my problem, quite frankly. Those positive things, and you're right, they are positive things. The only problem is they haven't been done in the right order. We have a quarter of a million dollars worth of structural problems with the building. You know, if you, if you take a house, somebody gave you a house that was in rough shape, You'd make it structurally sound first. You'd make it weather tight on the outside. You'd paint it. Then you'd go on the inside. You'd do the plumbing. You'd do the electrical work. You'd do whatever carpentry work you'd need to be done. And when that was all said and done, you'd get the paintbrushes out and the wallpaper out. We haven't taken that approach at all. I have been complaining. Uh... That's the problem. I didn't start in the beginning. I asked a lot of questions. I've only been doing this for three years and poor Kyle has had to listen to me. Um, so, so, so he, he, he know he understands. And, um, and a lot of it's still new to him, but um, I said before Barry that it was bass backwards and it's not yes, personal. It I don't know how many people were, were involved in this um, as far as making all the decisions. And, and a lot of people put a lot of great effort into it. And I, and I understand that, but I'm, my first uh, walk inside the Bullard house, you know, since all of this has been, you know, ripped out, um, I was appalled. I really was. And I just kept my mouth shut because I didn't know enough of what, you know, has been taking place. And um, I've been banging the drum, uh, beating the drum, for the last three years, and we got the survey done, Tim's survey done, and you have you have vetoed everything we wanted to do with um, Tim's survey, including the solar stairs. I mean, and and Jeez. and um, you don't want to go for grants because we have to follow the standards, and we have to pay. You know, we have to advertise. We have to pay um, prevailing, wage. prevailing wage. You don't want to. Who do, do you mean? Who do you mean by you? <laughs> what do you mean? Are you She's speaking to someone in particular? Yeah, are you speaking yeah, no. about the commission as a whole? Well, I uh, no one has applied for any anything um, as far as grants, and Barry has stated that he 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 didn't care if the project got done for another twenty years, and he stated that at a public meeting of ours. And um, you know, I mean, I like I've been just, I'm staying very calm right now. Okay, and that's. Let's, let's get back well, to let's that. go to option three all right option three i've labeled it do it right all right first and first and foremost with a project of this type particularly if you want to get grant money use cpa money and you or use other grant money you need to bring an architect on board that has experience in historical house preservation and restoration and knows how to implement the standards and the massachusetts building codes chapters 11 and 12, as they relate to historic buildings. The note I have here is that the grant itself, all right, 
states that the applicant must retain an architect to, to, to prepare outline plans and specifications for the proposed work. If funded, uh, the Massachusetts Commission will continue to require an architect. Moving on to the next bullet. Just so we all can have an appreciation and an understanding, if you're not familiar with it, of what the Secretary of Interior standards are about, here are two quotes out of the grant document itself of uh, reiterating the standard for preservation. The historic character of the property will be retained and preserved. The replacement of intact or repairable historical uh, materials or alterations of features, spaces, spatial relationships that characterize the property will be avoided. Standards for rehabilitation. A property will be used, excuse me, a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change to, this, to the uh, distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. So that's, this is a very thick document. Those are the two items highlighted right up front. People who are familiar with historical preservations know these standards inside and out. We got a lot of great carpenters in town. I believe most of them do not work with this standard. They know the regular building codes inside and out. That's why you need a preservation carpenter to do it right. I understand that Margaret has recently, or is in the process of, this, process of issuing, I don't know, it's an edict or whatever you want to call it, but this is what is addressed in the next floor. All future donated funds, regardless of the source, intended for restoration slash repairs of the board house must be either approved or rejected by the select board before being implemented. If implemented, the board shall require any repairs slash restorations conform to the Secretary of Interior standards, okay? And you can't do things like pulling out an existing stairway in the house and putting in Code Divine's 1833 stairway. That's not preserving and restoring, that's remodeling. That's prohibited. Here again, we put the copy for the horse. We went out and bought, not we, the Historical Society, their money, they can do anything that they want with it. Obviously, they're an independent corporation. But apparently, they went out and bought a thousand dollars worth of wallpaper, put it in a building that we can't even open to the public today. This was done, this was done back in the late 1990s. And we haven't finished, and we have yeah, we haven't finished the carpentry work. And we and we're putting up wallpaper. And and um, and the I think, uh, let me interrupt just for a moment. Um, I think, Carl, you've made your point very well that um, the approach is not. Uh, we understand your opinion of it. Yes, we understand. Well, okay, all right, and then fine, thank you. But but do you understand that we can't use the CPAC money if you don't follow the standards? The standards. Yes, Elaine, I do understand that. Okay, good. That's that's a message that needs to be uh, put across and understood by all, all parties. So the last point, okay, is the architect will prepare the necessary uh, statements of work and other relevant documents to obtain quotes, all right? to implement the remaining major tasks contained in the Squaw Hollow Survey of December 4th, as well as the supplement that's gonna be available in the near term. Uh, I have had discussions with Tim, his contractual date finished as supplement is March 31st. He believes he will have close to a final draft in the mid-February timeframe. That's important when we get to the next part of the presentation relative to the grant itself. Uh, the next thing would be uh, implementation of architect's proposed design for the era of the house uh, when it was purchased uh, for the house interior, particularly where 30 to 40 percent, I estimate, of the original fabric of the house on the first floor and second floor have been removed or, quote, repaired, not in accordance with the secretary's standards. 
uh, we must use a rest restoration pro uh, professionals to accomplish the necessary restoration tasks according to the standards. Again, you're looking at a price of somewhere between 300 to $400,000. Funding sources, which is obviously a very important thing. If you follow the standards, we have CPAC money available. We also have potential grant money available. In this case, at this grant, it's 100,000 matching. And if we get things in order, we could possibly get the building uh, done properly in our opinion in the next three to five years. If there's no questions there, or if there is, I should say, I'd be glad to entertain, entertain them, or we can go into the second part of the presentation with which deals directly with the uh, round 28 uh, grant requirements. Would you like me to proceed? Okay. Can I just ask you one thing? Um, the uh, preservation restriction. That's, 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 she was asking about the preservation restriction requirement. That's covered in this part here, in case you didn't hear it. Um, Does anybody have any questions for Carl? Well, it, th this is very dense. This, did I cut somebody off, by the way? No. No, go okay. ahead, Jen. This, this was, um, this is very dense. I mean, there's a lot of information coming at me. And because I'm brand new to this, it's a little overwhelming. And I, I almost feel like I'd love to see a chronology, you know, first we do this, then we do this, then we do this, and how much money we could raise, you know, to, to sort of simplify it um, for me. Um, I, you know, I'm interested in the requirements being quite different for this kind of building. And those are things that are all very new to me too, that I need to probably have some more information on. Um, well, we'll do our best, uh, perhaps in this next presentation, uh, maybe maybe some of those things will come to light. And uh, if not, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to try to, try to address it. Uh, the, the chronology, the chronology, and then to sort of pair it up with the time that we realistically feel it would take us to raise the money and to, you know, kind of to see it as a um, well, structured uh, plan I, that someone like me could understand. Un under option two, I mentioned, if we implement that plan, okay, uh, to, to uh, continue to uh, try to raise money uh, by, bond, by uh, donations, uh, you're looking at probably another 15 or 20 years. There's no there's no active fundraising activity or plan that I'm aware of in the works by the Historical Society or anybody else. So unless you have an out and out community campaign, all right, like 19 Carter had, like the like the uh, big old tavern had and got their tasks accomplished, it's not gonna happen in a reasonable time period. Should I go on with the details of the grant? Is that yes, yes, it's around 28. Yes, okay, so I have been down this road before. I have submitted a grant like this before, in 2001. It was for, it was a $90,000 grant, all right? Yeah. We were awarded it with the uh, Chestnut Street Meeting House and Cemetery Association of Town of Millville to restore a 1769 meeting house. And why were we successful? Number one, we had a great bunch of people raising money. We had raised over $50,000. Number two, we had an architect on board who was the National Park Service. We had all of our ducks lined up when we submitted that grant and I was past president at that time, but I took the lead in preparing the grant. I ended up being the, the local project coordinator when the grant was awarded. And when our president came back after the first meeting in Boston, with the grant people, they said it was one of the best grants they ever received. Not because Carl Wickstrom submitted it, but because we had the backing of the organization for the funding, and whatever work had to be do, done to support me to pull the grant together. And secondly, and most importantly, we had an architect behind us that knew what they were doing. 
This particular grant has 66 pages of instructions and it's a 17 page application. It's a nightmare to do, but it's doable. The due date is March 18th of this year. Uh, this is a, an item that Scott, I think you need to bring the board's attention or a Margaret or whomever, but right up front where they tell you when the, the, the grant is due, they make a specific statement, okay? The municipalities must allow adequate time for the design selection procedure under Mass General Law, Chapter 7, blah, 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 okay? So when they tell you that up front, you know it's not a one-hour task. Uh, this has to do with our procurement system in town. Maybe it's already in place. I have no knowledge of that. But it has to do specifically with the policies and procedures as they relate to hiring, uh, architectural and other engineering services. If we, have the, if we have this in place, that's terrific. If not, somebody's got to do a lot of work. Before we, the we already have, I think we already have decent uh, purchasing this is a very, in place. This, this is a very specific one re, re, uh, relating to architectural services and engineering services, not just general procurement, very specific. I think maybe even legal counsel may have to look at it. I don't know, that's a maybe, but well, someone has had some, I mean, we've, we've, had we've some purchased a lot of services. Well, all right, if, if, it's there, if it's there, ladies and gentlemen, it's not an issue. I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with our town's procurement system. Right. I'm flagging this as, right. hey, we got to look at it because the, the state obviously says you need time to do it. No. If it's done, that's terrific. That's one mile. It's not done. Off. It has to be done. You have to go through a an architect selection process for the particular project you're doing, mm -hmm. and this is what we did on the town hall elevator project. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is time consuming, and it does. It, there's a lot of formalities to take care of, and it does take a while. But so so that's something. If if we're going to go forward, that somebody, and it's not me. Because I don't know our procurement processes, they have they have to look at it. Mm -hmm. Margaret is the town procurement officer. Yep, funding is a 50-50 share up to two hundred thousand dollars. Cities and towns can apply. Mm -hmm. CPA funding can be used. The award date is July seventh. So now on the next page, tasks. And you have to understand, there's a lot of numbers here that are not solid. There are numbers here that we may have to pull out and put back in. The objective is to see how close we can get to $100,000 so we can get another 100,000 from the state. So you gotta look at this as a bag of jello at the moment. And so best I can describe it. So the first thing I put down is there's an architect required. I threw $25,000 there. This is not going to be matched by the state. They will not pay under a production grant for architectural services. We got to come up with that 100% ourselves. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. Maybe we can use some future CPA funds, okay, or current, I should not future, excuse me, current ones. Maybe the historical society can come up with something. Maybe there's some mitigation money or a combination of all of the above. So the $25,000 is my number. I got it from the $100,000 of CPA funds that have already been approved. You can't go in with this grant and say, I've got money coming in down the pike. I wanna apply it here. The answer is no, you have to have the money in hand. So the, the, the task of foundation restoration, the cement floor, the drainage, and the bulkhead, that was all priced out by Tim Rule Heater at $95,000. We put another $5,000 in that to bring it up to $100,000 for the bulkhead. So that's where I got the $25,000 from, theoretically. Now, with respect to the bulkhead, there's language in the grant 
that says they will not pay for an addition. Well, my thinking is an addition is like we want to put a room on or something like that. But they may consider a bulkhead an addition. I don't know. An architect has to tell us that. You don't want to put it in and jeopardize the grant unless you know it can pass muster with the state. So then we have coming down the pike, the Squaw Hollow Survey Supplement that I mentioned earlier. Should the information should be available in the in the mid February time frame? These are Tim's words. This is going to be, uh, from a monetary point of view, significant. It's also going to require rework. I don't know any more than that at the moment. He was there this week, still ripping up plywood and looking underneath and hasn't put his report together. So we, this is a structural item. And if it can fit in somehow, we should certainly consider it. The next item is an archeological survey. The grant requires that if you're gonna disturb the ground in the project, which we are, because we're going to go forward with drainage of some sort, we'll be obligated to conduct an archaeological survey for which the state will pay and share 50-50. Uh, I put in a number of $5,000. That's based on a little bit of experience I had with the meeting house back in 20, 2001, excuse me. But it may not be a good number at all. I have made a preliminary contact there's, I went on the website, there's only two areas, two co companies rather, in this immediate area that seem to do this sort of thing. One is ACS out of Guilford, Connecticut. I spoke to the gentleman. If I send him information of what we're looking for, he's willing to give us some sort of an estimate. I also contacted Amy, Acme rather, and left a voice message during the holidays. They have yet to return my call. So then I threw in there insulation for 35,000. That's a Tim Woolheater number. I threw in exterior wall covering. That's the clapboards, the trim boards, et cetera, for another 35,000. Okay. Again, just to try to come up with, if we went with these numbers and if all these numbers were accurate, you'd be looking at 150,000 total grant split 50-50. The ideal thing would be to find out how we could fund the 25,000, put that back into, to, to bring up the 75 to 100,000 and get a $200,000 grant. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I just want to ask Janet. Um, excuse me, Janet. Yeah. Do you have a copy of um, the Bullard House Structural Survey? Um. <clears throat> I don't, I have the, I have the preservation plan and I have your two documents here, but I don't think I have that one. Okay. Um, I, well, because it, because it, it spells out everything that he surveyed the first time around on the oh, structural, oh, structural oh, part oh, of the, the, oh, the bullet house. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, yeah. Actual, the actual structural Tim, survey. Tim, Tim's report. Yeah. yeah. If you, if, 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 you should have that. Okay. okay. You should have a copy I can of that. Send you an electronic copy, or I can bring you a print copy on Friday. That will give you a lot of a lot of information about That's the. That's probably building. the type of thing I'm looking for. That's yeah. Good. Yes. Thank yes. You. So, so, so the next part is additional funding source, <clears throat> and we're looking at a May June 2022 time frame here. CPA funds, again, as a reminder, uh, they need to conform to the standard. My understanding is that this $56,000 available at the present time, Elaine's gonna be attending a CPA meeting in the coming weeks. There is a possibility that that 56 could, drop, could grow to $100,000. That's a possibility. So with that in mind, okay, I've got this category of uses Again, these tasks and these monies come out of Tim Woolheater's report. Vaulted ceiling reinforcement, four grand. Exterior paint, 11 grand. And let me stop there for a minute. So, you know, if on the prior page, I put in there 35 grand for exterior wall coverings and everything. Clearly you wouldn't want to put the wall coverings on the outside 
and wait. Those will all be primed, by the way. You don't want to wait three or four years before you put the finished coats on. So it would be good if we could get that 11 grand to paint the exterior in a timely manner. I just wanted to clarify that. And You're talking about painting it before we do the whiteboards? Say again, Barry, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Hey. It's are you talking about painting before we do the clapboard? No, 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 no. We what I said was, we've got new clapboards. Yeah, what I said was, if we implemented the $35,000 task to put the new clapboards and trim on the house, yeah. those boards would be primed when they're put on. They sure. come primed. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to wait three or four years later to put the finished coat on. No, you'd want to do, no. You'd want, you'd want to get the $11,000 task done. I'm just pointing that out for clarity. I hope I didn't confuse, but that's what I'm okay. trying to talk So the next item uh, in terms of report, 13 windows classified as good and would require repair of 3,250. Nine windows classified as poor would require $13,500 of repairs. There's some number of doors I don't know, repaired, replaced, whatever, in Tim's report, $20,000. That totals $51,000. Then, of course, we got the elephant in the room, which is the supplemental uh, task that, uh, that Tim will be reporting on. And we don't know what that number is at the moment. So hopefully we could get up to, uh, you know, 100 grand here and maybe put the architectural fees in this amount of money for a grant like this in the next round because we can't count on money coming down the pike to put into the grant today. So some risk factors. If we, if we submit the grant, all right, we're going to have to delay implementing the 100 grand CPA task for the foundation, the cellar, floor, et cetera, et cetera until we know whether we've won the grant or not, which won't be until July 7th. It's not a big risk, but it's a risk. The other risk is when Elaine or whomever presents to the, uh, to the our citizens, request be the 56,000 or 100,000 of additional CPA monies, maybe they don't approve it. If they don't approve it, we don't have the funds, obviously. So probability of award, I think under the current circumstances, after I've gone through this, I was more optimistic when I first started reading about this and it first came to my attention several weeks ago. I think the probability of award right now is very low. Primary reasons, we do not have an architect with historical preservation experience on board beforehand. That's the biggest problem. My other concern, and I don't know if I'm right here, but I'm gonna share it with you. We have had substantial destruction of the original fabric of the bullet house. The interior, excuse me, the interior. That could work against us if we're trying to apply for the Massachusetts Historical Commission grant. I would leave that call up to a preservation architect. I don't have the experience to know whether my concern is strongly valid or mildly valid or not valid at all. But it's a concern I have because I know they have a right to come in to see the building, see the status it's in. And usually when you go in with something like this, you want to put in there, boy, we've done all these great things, all those positive things, June, that you were mentioning. You want to put that in the grant saying, you know, we're trying to help ourselves here, folks. We've done a lot of positive, great things to the bullet house. So all we need is a little bit more of your help, just another hundred grand. So please help us. So that would be part of the grant write-up. And I don't know how I dance around because I'm not an architect, this potential problem. Maybe I'm wrong. I want to bring it to everybody's attention. We need a professional to make that call. That yeah. condition, yeah. that condition, yeah existed when we acquired the property. And that would be the approach to write it around. That's terrific. I don't because, know. Because almost all of the 
a very large part of the structure behind the middle wall where the fireplace wall is had been greatly done in in the 20th century before we acquired it. Oh, that's, that's a positive. One of the reasons why we have not gone for the concept of a full restoration for the house when we first started working with it is because it had been so substantially changed and that we essentially drew a line at the fireplace wall and said in front of that wall we're going to try pretty try hard to maintain original fabric and behind that wall we're going to try to fix it so we can use it for a museum because there's very little left there for us to work with in terms of original fabric i know the massachusetts historical commission would not have would not have a problem back if you know a year after we bought the house say for example and we said here's what we bought and they'd understand that that was the condition at the time but i think we've done things since then again i i'm not going to argue this point i'm not intelligent enough i'm just surfacing it as a potential problem somebody who has architectural experience has to make that call i don't think anybody here with all the respect has that knowledge so there's uh, some alternatives, all right? This same grant package, and by the way, you know, they don't separate here are the rules for, for a pre-app, pre-development, and here are the rules for a development. It's all woven together. So, you know, if you want to now look at pre-development, you got to go back and read all 66 pages again and ferret out which applies to a pre-development grant. So we could apply for a pre-development grant. Same due date, same funding share, dollars change, minimum is 500,000, maximum is 30,000 for, for, for a total grant in that case of 60,000. I believe given what would be required that we, we would be foolish to go for anything less than the total 60,000, which means we would have to put up 30,000, which begs the question, where do we get the funding from? You can't take it out of the current 100 grand of CPA funds because that was not part of that task. I could justify in my mind taking 25,000 out with the other bit, other part of it because we would be doing tasks associated with the 100 grand, with, yes, with that original 100 grand. So I don't know if you all have this in front of you or if you want me to read it, but this defines the purpose of a development grant. Basically, it's to get all your statements of work and uh, studies and feasibility data and drawings and whatever else together by an architect to have available when you submit your request for a development grant. It's going to be a historic architect. A historic architect, yes, no doubt about it. So there are other items in this grant document <coughs> that, <coughs> excuse me, that the select board needs to be aware of and, and, and I believe take action on. First one, you would have to agree to sign up to a preservation restriction. That would have to be reviewed by town council. In a nutshell, preservation restriction says when you do the present, when you do the preservation, you're going to do it in accordance with the standards. Second thing it typically says is, once the project's done, okay, if you want to make any major change, like for example, say five years after the basic project is done, you need to put a roof on it. You have to notify the Massachusetts Historical Commission that you're going to put a roof on it. They're going to ask you what type of roof and how you're going to do it, and is it going to meet the standards? And then they'll tell you, most likely, yes, go ahead. But you have to do that. So we, we need to be aware that we have to enter into a preservation restriction agreement, which is also required, as I understand. And I haven't looked at it personally, but I understand that it's also required when you utilize CPA funds. That's right. Okay. Uh, a local, I'm sorry, a local project coordinator uh -huh. must be assigned according to the grant. And that has to be identified at the time of grant submission. As I mentioned, 
And, and by the way, they encourage in there the person that wrote the draft or, or excuse me, wrote the grant or is responsible for the grant should be the local project coordinator. As I mentioned earlier, I was the local project coordinator for the meeting house grant I mentioned. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind doing this except for one problem. The grants awarded is it gonna be awarded on the 7th of July. The local project coordinator has to go into Boston and I know there's COVID complication if that might change, but assuming it's not a problem. The local project coordinator is required to go into Boston on the 8th of July to participate in a seminar about how to manage the grant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've already been to one of those back in 2001. It's a full day event. So my problem is, and Elaine's problem is, July is high season for day release here at the farm. Our farm is open seven days a week, 10 to five. We cannot get off the farm in July. If we need errands, we do it one at a time and go away for not more than an hour and come back. So we're just not available in this time frame. Now, I don't know if in another round coming down the pike, if it's a different time frame, it might be a completely different story but we couldn't handle this in this particular time frame. Applicant must retain an architect to prepare outline plans and specifications for the grant itself. And must have previous experience in historical projects. So we got some recommendations. Uh, I believe that we should not submit a response to the round 28 at this time, because I don't believe we're probably prepared to do so. The grant preparation process has already been uh, delayed by four to six weeks. We're already 46 weeks behind schedule. Uh, the next bullet item, and the reason I bring this up, okay, is based on my experience as chairman of the Agricultural Commission. I'm, I, I'm, I'm the commission, Laura Buskey is the clerk and treasurer. She does an outstanding job. Part of her job is she checks the AgComs website, town website, and I don't know how she does it because I'm not that computer savvy, but she checks the emails that come in for the for the uh, for the uh, Agricultural Commission, and at every monthly meeting, she brings to everybody's attention all the information that has come in, whether it's from the Farm Bureau the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Agricultural Bureau or whatever, private citizens, everybody is aware of what has come in. And if something comes in that she recognizes is very timely, she brings it to my attention before the meetings. We need to make sure that we have that in place. Maybe we do already, I don't know, but we need to make sure that that is in place so that when we get- Indeed, we need place, I believe. That's been is, there, is, it all, yeah. is it being disseminated to all members? That's it, the key. I believe so. And that is uh, the new members have been submitted so that they have the new members on the list. You should start okay. seeing things from them occasionally. Good. All right. Well, and, and have you gotten any of these kinds of things before or not? Never. No, no never. Okay. I've, I've gotten things forwarded from Mary when it comes across her desk, but nothing. We, I had a, um, I had an email from Jennifer Doherty, who is on the staff of the MHC, and uh, she, this was on December 9th, and um, one of the things she asked for was um, an update on members of commission, of the historical commissions, the local historical commissions, and so Just all all your contact information was entered at that time. Good, but but just to make a point, it shouldn't be li just limited to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. There, well, like, on, like on the I icon. Asked, uh, Carl, I have asked, um, I think I asked Margaret and she referred me to Travis. Um, I yeah. asked that, I'm sorry. I, I don't know who Travis is, but that's okay. Go Travis ahead. is our IT person. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. And I asked um, for the any all those emails that go through the website. Um, I asked for those to be 
to come to us. But and um, we don't, I don't get any, like, I think I've gotten two. And those are um, inquiries that I've, that are not since you and Janet have been on, but, but were prior to that um, earlier this year about research questions. Okay. So oh, I don't know what other kinds of emails you're used to with the Agricultural Commission, but. We get, we get lists of them. <laughs> Laura Busty, Laura Busty will, will publish in our minutes a list of emails every month that's probably that long. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't, maybe it's I that think... long, maybe it's that long, but it, it, there's a lot of them. Most of them aren't relevant to what we're interested in, but at least if somebody on the commission is interested in a particular subject, they can look at that list and say, oh yeah, I'll go check that out or whatever. So, but okay, if we're doing that, that's great. I mean, it, it, we just well, need to make sure that's open. Things, that's okay. um, I can check with um, Travis again to make sure that that we're getting things. I just tend to think that historical doesn't have that kind of volume. If we do, I'm, Maybe afraid, we're lucky I'm afraid that I'd have to appoint someone else to deal with it because I'm yeah. just, I'm doing as much as I can do right now. I understand. Yeah. Well, maybe we're lucky and we won't get a lot of emails. That'd be a good thing. All right, uh, next bullet. Uh, there, as we mentioned, there's no architect in place to provide the necessary documents for the grant over the next eight weeks or so. Now, here's the schedule I would have in mind, all right? The grant due date is 18 March. In my mind, everything would have to be essentially done by the 1st of March. Because you're going to need between the first, the second of March, and the seventeenth of March, to review it by the commission, the town administrator, the select board. People are going to have comments. People are going to have questions. People are going to want corrections. How many weeks or days did it take us just to get to where we are tonight? So you got to have a two-week window at the end of the process to accommodate all that. And the package has to be uh, postage marked the 18th. It's the 19th, you're out of the game. So you need a two week period to go through the review cycle. And oh, we forgot that. Oh, we need to correct that type of process. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, the select board needs to coordinate with the legal counsel, I believe, with respect to the preservation restriction agreement requirement. We have to check with Margaret or someone to make sure that the design selection procurement requirement is in place or needs to be put in place, one or the other. And a local project coordinator would have to be assigned. Next bullet. We should start preparing now for the next round because there's a lot of footwork to be done to get ready. After I prepared this document, and uh, sadly it came to my attention by Margaret telling me that she's going to be out on medical leave starting on the 18th of January. I don't think we can accomplish this without her being on board. And finally, Whatever we end up wanting to do with the board house, with, res with respect to getting it done and open, we can't be doing this in a vacuum. We submitted a plan, we the commission, I should say, submitted a plan on 1-11-2016. I don't know for a fact, but I highly suspect we probably met with the slick board on that date or thereabouts. And we probably haven't met with the select board since. I may be wrong with respect to what's going on in the board house. And what do we need to do? My point being, folks, this is a big, expensive, difficult project. If we're gonna go forward with any restoration plan, we have to understand that both boards during that process have to periodically get together. Hopefully we could do it in person instead of this system, because it's not ideal. 
communicate to one another what's being done, how it's being done, who's doing it, and what we need or may not need. Thank you very much. appreciate your time. And, I, and I'll be glad to entertain yeah. any questions you might have. Uh, I'd like to know. Oh, Janet, go ahead. No, you go first. No, go ahead, Jan. Oh, okay. Well, well, but one of the questions that pops into my mind is that, I mean, as a group with, with both, uh, um, with everybody involved that's here tonight, um, we have not really sat down and talked about goals and that sort of thing. And I understand that that's something that those of you who've been with this group a long time have already done. But one of one of my questions is, while we're doing the restoration of the Bullard House. Are, do we want to try to maintain our other some some other programs that actually reach out to people that allow people to see the collection that to do a lot of things that will eventually happen in the Bullard House? Right now, I know we use some of the town hall for the old town hall for um, functions or exhibits, and so when we think about how much time and energy we can put into this grant and into the um, um, is it called a restoration of the um, Bullard House? How do we still want to leave some of our energy, some of our time um, for the kinds of things that we also have as goals? And that would be things like um, offering programs, setting up exhibits, um, doing tours, you know, somewhere in town perhaps. Um, and various functions, things that, that you guys have been doing all along. Um, the society, I think, particularly has been uh, very hardworking in that area and trying to keep things going even without the house being supportive, the Bullard House being supportive. And, I, and there's also a group that's going to be um, working on the Hearst House. So I, I, I just wonder if we can step back a minute and make sure that we're not seeing um, the restoration of the Bullard House in a vacuum that's going to you know, sap our energy so much that we may not um, give attention to those other things. I said, does that make sense? I, yes. I think um, it wouldn't sap our energy so much if um, we were more cohesive in the plan and more agreeable to the plan, there would be less negativity if we if we stuck together and did it right. Are you talking about right. did it the whole picture or just the bullet house? When At the moment, the bullet, the bullet house is the biggest elephant in yeah. the room. Yeah. That's stopping it, everything. It, it, it seems like it is going to be something that's going to take some time. And we're assuming we can get all this money when we when we need it for the next stage. Um, and if we can't, and if we have to wait, you know, we're hopefully still going to be a historical society that serves the community, a historical commission, we are, that serves the community. And so I guess that's just one of the reasons I might say, um, even if it means that we have to wait a little bit on something, and I'm not talking about waiting for long periods so that in, you know, 26 years, we still haven't done it. But um, you know, to, to because it, there is sometimes money involved in setting up some of these programs for the people in the community as well. So does every penny that we have go to the Bullard House? And those are just questions I raise um, because I think it's practical to raise those questions and to find out how much we value the restoration of the Bullard House and how much we also value what we're doing with what we can do with programs and and um, and and the other thing is and this is where I think the volunteers may come in um, it, not in building because it takes an expert to do that but um, we keep talking about needing to do an inventory and needing to accession and deaccession things in order to be able to really um, present the way we want to and teach and whatever else we're going to be doing. Um, you know that. Yeah, and there are other there are other, other things in town too that um, you know we should um, be concerned about um, as far as historical building. Um, yeah. 
but we've got to we've got to get this. We've got to get past this. We've got to get it done, and you know, then I think then everything will fall together. But um, there'll be more interest for one thing. You know, if if people know that. So, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, Scott, I have I have a question for you, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I know. Obviously, you're here representing the board, and uh, really appreciate that. Okay, and I know. Uh, you can't make any decisions for the board this evening on your own, okay? But uh, we really need to know as soon as possible uh, what way the board wants to go with this. If you uh, want to, if you want, uh, I'm sorry, if you want although, to follow, you're right. Uh, although I can't speak for the board. Right, I understand uh, that. I, I know that the board believes that we have a historic commission that we take guidance from. I mean, I think that's how this is set up, is that all the board does make the final decisions. We take it basically at the recommendation of the historic commission. And I believe there is tremendous support on the select board for the historic commission. And so if the historic commission comes up with a recommendation on a direction to go, we are likely to support it. And, and as opposed to when it comes to sort of coordination between the two, you know, I, I've only been on the select board for 18 months, but I believe the historic commission is presented to the select board a couple of times. I know that the select board has appointed me to be the liaison between the select board and the historic commission. So there is sort of some uh, 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 strong communications and understanding between the two so things are not done in the vacuum. I believe June and I have had several email conversations to keep me up to date because the meetings tend to be during the day. And sadly, I, I have a job that I can't always get away from, but I've even attended a couple of in-person meetings where I have been able to adjust my schedule um, uh, to attend some of them. And so I think there is decent communications between the Historic Commission and the Select Board. Okay, then I would like to make a motion, June. Thank you, Scott, I appreciate your insight. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to make a motion that the, uh, Historical Commission uh, vote as to uh, whether they would like to proceed at this time with the round 28 grant or postpone such action until the next round is available. So there's two motions there. Well, no, it's all in one, I believe. I mean, you know. Do you want to do it now or do you want to do it? No, that's, later? there's two motions. We, right. Which thing okay. do you want to move? All right, I'll, I'll break it up. And the, the, do, you want to, do you want to proceed with submitting a round 28 grant uh, by the due date of March 18th, 2022? Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. Okay, yeah, discussion? Hmm. Is there any discussion? I, I think what I said earlier um, about hoping that we can keep other balls in the air at the same time makes me feel that I would rather see us as, um, as Carl has suggested, you know, start working on it, but not plan to actually apply for it for another year. Because um, I think it would allow us to have a little bit balanced program for the people of town. Of the right. town hour. That, I've already said that. You know what I think about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, But we do, we do want a, an understanding that that the historical commission will support this when we do go forward. That's the second motion. Oh, all right. Okay, that's the second oh, that's motion. the next motion. Okay. Yeah. Scott, so the yeah. motion, the motion is uh, to support round twenty eight, which which is imminent. Carl, uh, with your, some of your knowledge on these grants, uh, do you think the, uh, we might be in a better position a year from now if we have the structural stuff taken care of? In other words, if we went to the state society a year saying, look, the town has invested stabilizing this building and now we want the money to sort of finish off the rest of it with our, again, a CPA match, uh, does that, you think that puts us in a better position? Yes, if, yes, if we have in place an architect. Yep. Preservation architect. And then you think a preservation architect needs to be in place before we apply for the grant as opposed Absolutely. to as part of the grant. Okay. Absolutely. Because first of all, for a production grant, the costs are not allowable from the state's point of view. Right, right. So you, and, have, two, then, you have two choices. Either apply for a pre-production grant and get the architect funded that way, 
or come up with the money yourself somehow. CPA, in our case, fundraiser, historical con society contribution, uh, uh, mitigation monies. We need to come up somehow right. either with the grant money ourselves, with, this, the, with the architect money ourselves, or apply for a pre-development grant. It's one or the other. Because if we do the pre-development <laughs> grant, um, that's when we'd ask for more money at this next round of uh, CPA. And, and then well, if I remember- off, That would put us off another, in another cycle. In other words, what she said, I think, is if we got, if we got in May of this coming year, of this year, uh, CPA money for the architect, okay? Uh, now, I don't know if that would be enough money, uh, how much we're talking about, because we don't have an estimate. So it would be the, it would be either the $30,000 to get a total of $60,000 for a pre-production grant beyond May, or we get enough CPA funds to, to fund the total architect requirement, both for the preliminary submission of a production grant and to support it thereafter. I think we need to back up here because, uh, and we need clarification. Um, there are a lot of ifs here. I think that. Well, with respect to the motion. Right. Whether we want to submit a grant on the, on the 18th or not, I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so why don't, we, why don't we first vote on that? And then we can, the, the other points that were brought up really have to do with, um, the round 29 and which kind of grant and how we juggle the money to do that. Yeah, so uh, is that, does that clarify oh, somewhat? Uh, so the motion is to support uh, going forward with, with the round 28 MPPF grant. And it's been seconded by Elaine and we've discussed it and we need to vote. So we'll start with Elaine. Uh, no, uh, no. no. And, Car yeah. and Carl? No. Um, Janet? No. And Barry? No. And June? No. So it, the motion um, fails. So the second motion that Carl proposed is to, as I believe, is to support preparation of one of, of either a development grant or a pre-development grant uh, for round 29. And my understanding is the timing is always the same. I mean, it varies varies with day, you know, a few days, but but it's presented in in the winter by January. You must submit your application the middle of March, and then the awarding is in the summer in July, which Carl has pretty much outlined. And that that's an annual thing. So we would, uh, so that's the timeline is what I'm saying. Can I just amend what you just said slightly? I think it would be appropriate. Uh, for round 29, again, that would be a select board grant. One of the things that's emphasized in round 28, and I'm sure will be in round 29, is that the select board must have, must have a letter of support from the town's historical commission. You well, don't, again, I don't think the select board would ever vote in favor of going to the grant unless the historical commission suggests that you go for it. No, I'm, I understand that. What I'm trying to point out to the other folks, Scott, is that I think in this motion, we should state now as well that when the, when the round 28, if, if and when the round 29 grant is submitted, the commission will provide a letter of support. I don't want to go through this again around 28, whether we're going to do it to the standards 
or just the, or just the general building codes or what we're going to do. If we're going to go, if we're going to go for the grant, it's got to be done to the standards. If we're going to go for CPA funds. It's got to be done to the standards. So we as a group, not Scott, because he's not part of our group. No offense, sir. <laughs> we as a group, we as a group, okay, need to decide. Now I believe in some motion, if it's not this one. That if, in fact, we are going to do around 28, and if we're prepared at that time to do it, excuse me, 29, if we are, we're going to do around 29, if we're prepared at the time to do it, all right, we will agree as a group to submit to the select board a letter of support for round 29. Because I don't want to go through this again. You're right, still right? asking uh, us, you're asking us to support a pig and a poke. I don't How mean to that? say that I'm going to say that I'm opposed to the whole thing. I'm saying that we need to know what we're voting for when the time comes to vote for it. And you're asking us to vote for it before we know what it is. No, I'm saying if if we decide to submit, if you don't, if you decide not to, then there's no vote. I mean, you know, there's no there's no letter of support. All I'm saying, if the, if the, if the determination is made at that time to submit the grant that we, we were willing to support it. If we're not willing to, to submit the grant, then it's a moot point. We don't have to worry about a letter of support. So I'm not asking you, I'm not asking you to bet the farm in advance. I'm asking you to acknowledge that that's what we'd be willing to do if we go ahead with round 29. And he's already so, outlined how we, how we go about it. What do we gain by, by deciding that now? The motion. Janet, the gain is the gain is letting the selectmen know. Letting the selectmen know we're going to stand behind it. If that's what they want to do, it's their grant. Well, again, uh, it's not our grant? select board. The select board might have the name on it, but we're doing the grant at the request of the historic commission. I'm not sure. No, sir. I, I, no, sir. No, 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 excuse me. No, excuse me. Excuse me. I got to correct that. No, sir. With all due respect, no. No. This is a select board grant. The select board would only apply for the grant if the historic commission if, asked. If you to. get a letter, if you if you if we're willing to provide you it's not, with it's a, letter not a letter of support. support, we support the activities. We would we as a select board support the historic actions of the historic commission, and so if the historic commission doesn't want to do it, then we wouldn't do it. And so it is weird because right. I think you're I think you're That's asking to submit a letter for something you're asking the select board to do, which is two actions and they're the same sort of action to me. So. But that that the select board, the select board only does grants on historic properties at the request of the historic commission. We would not write the grant unless the historic commission asked us to write the grant in the first place. And I assume when you ask us to write the grant, you would also provide us a letter of support because you're asking us to write the grant. Okay, right. so so we don't have to be involved in the select board's going to do it. So can I? I don't. Uh, want I to thought I just said. I, I, I thought I just said hundred. I just thought I said the hundred eighty direct degree the other direction. We would only write the grant if the historic commission says it is the thing to do and you would like to write to write the grant with me. Because we, uh, like, I, I don't know all this right stuff. Margaret doesn't know historic preservation stuff. Margaret doesn't have a co co connection with it, that we support the activities of the historic commission. So the reason we can't, as a commission, write the grant, we can't include, right. we can't include in a grant that we write the, that, that says we, we, we have a letter of support from the historical commission that we support the grant. So, you would I mean, be the ghost writers for the grant that has the select board name on it, like most is, of the grants we do. Okay. It's much too bureaucratic. Okay. Okay. Can I, ask I move to question? table the motion? No, no, okay. we, can, we can still I, discuss it. If, if we can, I do did have something I wanted to mention too. There's something about it that just feels a little funny to me that we as a commission are making a decision, if I've got this right, for what might be a different commission next year. I mean, I, my, my term is up in May. Now, I'm, I hope I can get reappointed because I'd like to kind of stick <laughs> with this started. group. <laughs> yeah, um, but, but the truth is, you know, if I screw up, I might not get reappointed. And so, um, and, and you know, we, it, it just seems like the people who are in those positions at the time that that is being decided should be the ones who say what they want to do with the grant. I don't, that just feels right to me. It feels kind of like the way things are usually done, but 
it, rather than us committing this year to what the commission next year is going to do. Well, the, the process of the preparation of the grant would be within your appointed time, Janet. Yeah. Um, and the rest of us are, are on the hook for longer than that. So um, I, I, I understand your point, but I think that- yeah, Mine is probably more a theoretical point than a yeah, actual but, problem. <laughs> so I, but I, I don't think you need to worry about the fact that you, you know, whatever you, your input was to it would, would be negated no, because- I'm not, it's just, the, it's the theory behind it, that the yeah, people yeah. who are citizens at that moment in a country should be the ones who vote, not the people who were there last year, you know, that type of thing. It's yeah. just, it's, yeah. theoretically, it no, seems- But I think like technically you, you definitely would be within the preparation period. Yes. Because yes. Your, your appointment goes through the end of May and it would all be, it would be, um, it wouldn't be awarded, but it would have been mm -hmm. submitted. Okay. So I in this particular no, instance, it isn't going to be would... submitted until next year. I have a question for Barry. Okay. If you, if you don't mind. Um, are you saying you just are opposed to uh, applying for any of these grants? No. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we don't know what the proposal is even going to be when the time comes as of right now. And therefore, why would we vote on it? We're going to have to vote on it at the time that we have a proposal before us. And at that time, assumedly, if the commission votes to support to to submit that, then the commission is also going to vote is going to send the letter of the selectmen recommending it. I just don't understand why we would vote now that we're going to send a letter recommending something that we haven't decided to submit yet. Well, I because I, I don't want Carl, I, I don't I, I, I don't want to get three quarters away through a grant that is extremely time consuming and difficult to do, and then all of a sudden the commission says, "Ah, we don't want to do that." Okay. So if you want to take that approach, I don't have a problem with it, but before I would do one speck of a thing on round 28, I got to know that this commission is willing to stand behind it and write a letter of support. I don't want to get three quarters away with this kind of activity, put in 80 man hours, and somebody say, oh, geez, we don't want to do that. We want to continue with the with the old plan. That's what I'm concerned well, this about. Is a, I understand what Carl is getting at, and I don't, and I agree with him. Um, but but what's underlying all of this is our commitment to what needs to be observed in this kind of a grant. And that is uh, interior, Secretary of Interior Standards, uh, procurement procedures, all of the, the preservation restriction, all of these special things that need to be in place. And I, for one, um, think we should move to to support that kind of work, um, those kinds of standards, so that if there is preparation um, for round 29, um, there won't, we won't have to, <laughs> we won't have to, what you wouldn't have to wonder that we wouldn't right, support. Right. Well, all right. Hey. Well, we can't go ahead with the CPA uh, foundation work without an architect. Yeah, that's the next hurdle. And the reason being, okay, and I had, I had a brief discussion with Margaret on this subject. The reason basically being, this is a complex task, this 100K that we have, the tasks that are intended for the 100K. So you can't just go out with a standard request for quote, say, give me a bid. You need detail statement of work mm -hmm. that somebody mm -hmm. who has the technical knowledge and I don't believe any of us here have that capability all with due respect because you need to be a registered architect basically to do it or an engineer as a minimum so that we can take that statement of work and any drawings or whatever that need to be accompanying it and go out for bids. So one of the things that was overlooked when we requested the 
hundred thousand dollars is the fact that we didn't put in there monies for an architectural architect to do to do the job right. I had initially proposed Margaret if we could send out not a request for quote, but a request for proposal. The difference being we would ask under a request for proposal, we would send out basically what's in Tim Woolheater's report or their, you know, facsimile thereof and say to the contractors, here's what we have in mind. Tell us in writing how you're going to do it. And then when we got that, and what the price would be, of course. And then when we got that in, we would evaluate what the contractors had proposed and what the prices are associated with it. My general understanding is that Margaret doesn't think she can get that through our or the state's procurement requirements. That it has to be more of a, and I don't want to speak for her, but that was my understanding. And so we need to have a uh, detailed statement of work and whatever drawings or whatever is necessary to support. So one thing we could consider doing, given that's the case, is uh, assuming as a minimum the town agrees to fund us the $56,000 we talked about earlier. And some portion of that would be earmarked for the architect. But to do that, we need to find an architect, number one, that is qualified to do this kind of work. I mean, and what, how much he's, he or she is looking for. Because if we do that, we might as well go for the full Megillah in anticipation of round 29. So we have all the architect monies there to do maybe the immediate task. And then when we get to round 29, we still have money left over so we can hire the same architect again to do what is necessary for round 29. That would be my thinking. I mean, okay. we can discuss it, but that's... So you know, I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, so the extra money, if it were awarded to um, by CPA, yeah. it would yeah. would provide our, the uh, monies for an architect to help us with our foundation. Yeah, let me let me just let me just phrase it another way. Maybe by example, maybe easier. Let let's say it was determined by an architect. To do everything that's in, in in round 29, including the 100K task. And let's say, for example, his fees are $50,000, pick a number. And then we could say to him or her, okay, of that 50000 how much to implement just the 100K task for which we have the money and a general description of those tasks in hand. And let's say the person says, oh, I need 10K of that 50K to do that subtask. And we say, okay, great. Here's your 10K, go do it. And we move forward with that procurement. Then we take the other 40 grand left over and we apply that to whatever we need to get into round 29. I mean, I don't know. That's just a thought. That's that's been our thinking that you know, and we have to. We kind of have to decide that tonight because I'll have to do that within the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I actually, I actually see your um, point, um, and and I think um, Carl was making the same point. Um, it, and for me, the way I justify making that decision for 29 as well, um, for uh, but whatever the next round is. Oh, 29. <laughs> round 29. 29, 29, 29 you <laughs> That's got That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, so, and the reason I, I, I'm sort of shifting now and saying, yeah, I can just try to say it. If I think of it, this as a two year project that we have chosen to make this application, 
Um, it's it's sort of like we're we're making we're starting it now. I mean, we're starting the work on it now, but we won't it won't come to fruition for us until twenty nine, and that just feels different to me somehow. Um, it it suddenly made sense to me. So yeah. so the other part that of the is problem, the right way to do it probably. Yeah, the, the other part of the problem, of course, is. If we turned that architect on for 10 grand, if it was a 100 grand task, and we did that in June of this year, for example, or July, all right. Uh, we'd go ahead with the task and it would be completed some period of time. But what are we gonna put up for matching funds for round 29? Exactly. So the only thing the only thing you can do is go in for CPA for a hundred grand, a new hundred grand again. Okay. That's right. Do the <clears throat> partial task and have maybe fifty grand. I don't know what the numbers are. Fifty, sixty, maybe even seventy. I don't know grand that we could go in for around twenty nine with. And say to the state, we got. 70 grand, give us another 70 grand to make it $140,000 grant. So, nobody said it would be easy, folks. But do you understand the path we're trying to take to get it done in a, in a reasonable amount of time? I mean, it can be done if, if we get our act together. So the, the, uh, we need, I think what we need is a motion to agree on the path first. It, um, can you, if you could formulate that motion, we could. Is there a motion on the Good. floor already? No? Good. Not yet. No, that wasn't, okay. Scott? Um, I, I think you have money for an architect. I think the 2016 annual town meeting motion, which we amended, uh, I think, uh, in the fall uh, has a, both $11,000 left in the motion or in the pot, pot. And it is for, it did include now design, survey and engineering. And under design, I think you could, you can include architectural work. Yeah, I, I so agree so with on, you. On the mitigation money you're saying? On the, no, no, on not the on the mitigation money, on, on, on uh, the motion that was passed in the 2016 town meeting, in some respects to support the plan that, that the historic commission put together in 2016. And so when that plan was put together, the, there was a motion at town meeting to spend some money to help bring some of that stuff about. Uh, as they went down that path, is my understanding, as we went down that path further, one, some of the things didn't turn out the way they were supposed to. We used some of that money to do Tim's uh, survey so that to get a better understanding of where the building needs to go and some priorities. But there's $11,000 left, I thought, in that fund, and it can be used for design work. And that's probably enough architectural work, maybe not for the round 29 grant, but at least the to get the to get this, the foundation work done, uh, which I also think just helps show the investment the town's making in the town that makes the, yeah, no I, I, what I, I, project I, I, you do yeah. makes the pro makes right. it makes it look better for the 29 grand. Yeah, right. the, the only unknown is, is 11 grand enough. I have no idea. I don't know. You know, normally right. these things, right. normally these architects work on a percentage of the total, okay? So if you're talking 100 grand, you know, they may want 15, they may want 20. I don't know. Well, I, I just don't know. I mean, we have, but we you have, could do, you have no problem doing, you might end up doing an RFP for, for architectural services. And if it turns out it's 25 grand, you know, you can't do it. If it turns out it's four grand, you jump up and down for joy, you take it and you move this project forward. I agree, but we just don't know at the moment. Right. So who but, would go but, for, who would go forward with that RFQ? Uh, usually again, the, 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 that Margaret works on it with a group of people who are trying to make it happen. Okay. I think the stuff we've done to date, uh, there have been volunteers from the Historic Commission that worked with Margaret. This Margaret sort of might put the actual sentences and verbiage together, but the details like what you want done and what it described and other things. Yeah, I've done all of that. Yeah, that's, a, that's, yeah. what we, that's what we've been doing. I've been yeah. ghostwriting that's for, what I thought. Night, I, for three yeah. years. Yeah. yeah, and we, yeah. Knew that. we knew that's what was done. Yeah. If if we'd had Margaret several years ago, when we were starting to start to use that money, oh, yeah. we would yeah. have gotten that project done. 
Yeah. And yeah. part of the reason it didn't happen is that the state regulations and the and the procurement issues and so forth just kind of overpowered us. Uh -huh. And we didn't have the right advice to move forward with it. And if we had had in talking to Margaret about it a little bit more recently, since she's come on board, if we'd had her, we would have had it done then. So I, I, it, it seems to me that that's a, a real key to the thing. And secondly, the whole business of the architect selection process and all of that, we need to investigate whether if we hire, if we can work on hiring an architect and going through the process to do it, whether we can then use that person to do a variety of things in, in, in terms of the total project, but in terms of the pieces that we're trying to fund and work on at any given time. And we, that we would start with the, with the foundation yeah. job. You know, I, don't disagree. Could, I don't disagree. I wonder if you could even write it saying, here's all of the things we want to have done. How much of this can you do for $11,000? <laughs> uh, I, I don't, that would that would not pass with Margaret. I'll tell you that right now. No, no. no. Quite quite sure. that, what we can do is we can take those tasks mm -hmm. out of Tim's report, delete where the money is shown, okay, and say to an architect once we decide who we want to go to, and we probably want to test the waters with two or three of them, and say what would it cost to implement these tasks from a statement of work, drawings, et cetera, et cetera, whatever we need. And if it's under 10 grand, we don't even have to be competitive. We can just go out and award it to somebody. But first of all, we've got to come up with a list of architects. Next thing is, and, and here's the problem, as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, the timing is such that Margaret's going to be out for an extended period of time. That, that is a serious problem to this yes, whole process. Yes, absolutely. That's why, I put it, that's why I put it on my punch list that we discussed earlier. It that's is a right. serious problem. Okay. Um, I think we have to keep that in mind in regard to any kind of a schedule we try to establish here because if we, if we aren't going to have Margaret, we need somebody of similar caliber to help us do some things. Okay. So... Uh, we did have, a, I think Janet was correct because I'm reading my notes here, that we did have a motion from Carl um, to, to have the commission support. Uh, yeah, I'll, to, I will withdraw that three, motion. I will withdraw that motion, uh, uh, June. Okay. Uh, apparently, based on the preliminary discussions we've had, it's not going to be supported. So there's no need to waste our time to discuss something that we're going to turn down anyways, perhaps. So I will withdraw that, okay? Uh, I, I just, like I said, need, we need to understand right up front when round 28 comes, 29, excuse me, comes out. We need to make the decision the day we have that in our hand as to whether we're going to support, submit a letter of support or not to the select board. We can have that gentleman's agreement that we would approach it that way. I'm satisfied. The commission is going to have to is going to have to vote on the on the plan in the first place. So therefore, it seems to me that if we vote to approve it, then we're going to vote to. Yeah, but, but but again, it's timing. I, I we can't be three quarters of, of the way through. Uh, and, and incur 80 hours of, of, of manpower to write it, and then last minute say, oh, no, we don't want to do that. It's got to be up front. You're not going to, when we make that decision, you're not going to see a completed grant, I'll tell you. I can tell you, what, I can tell you what's going to be in it and what we're proposing in general terms, but that decision can't be made until the last minute or three-quarters of the way through the preparation of the grant. That decision has to be made up front because there's too much involved from a man point, power point of view, and too much work, and we're gonna to bother too many people. I got a list of, at the moment, in anticipation of this grant, I have a list of probably 15 people and companies that I would go out and ask for a letter of support, because the more of those you get, the better your chances are for the, to win the grant. So I'm not gonna go out and ask 15 people to send me a letter of support, and then 
somebody say, oh, the hell with it. We're not going to do that. I'm not going to be not going on that road. So that's why I say when round 29 comes out, we can discuss what our approach would be, whether we want to do it or not, and either agree or not agree to support the grant at that time. Yeah. Okay. If we have that gentleman's agreement and ladies' agreement, if you will, then I'm satisfied with it. We don't, it doesn't have to be a formal motion. Okay, can I can I have a motion though to um, ask for more money at the next town meeting for the uh, CPA? CPA. So the motion is to request CPA funds, and it will be for mostly for, mostly for an architect. Okay. I, I would uh, I would suggest a combination. I would, I would suggest for I would say for architectural services. And for the remaining task identified in uh, Tim Wilhita's original and supplemental report. Right. That's the recommendation I have. We well, haven't even seen the report yet. Right. Well, well you have we, the report, ma'am. We have, we, we have we the survey, really but we don't have you his have latest report. Right. Because You're right. There's still plenty of things we could pick out of the survey. To, to implement, okay, to keep moving forward. Okay. Uh, so it would it would be a very long explanation at the town meeting, um, but maybe no, we wouldn't. Yeah, well, by, by, by then we would by, know. By, 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 then, by then we would. This know. is this is just for her to be able to go and say, I, I want to raise the fifty six to one hundred thousand. Here's, here's the things we have in mind of doing. So we're going to have his report at the very latest, March thirty first, most likely more mid February. So if we add up all the remaining items that I had in this presentation that added up to 51,000, all right? And if this supplement that we had in hand, and I'm gonna throw a number out, said, oh, that's another 50,000. All right, we're obviously not gonna put that in to the, the uh, requirement for the town meeting, the fund, because it's gonna be 100,000, we gotta pay for engineering services, plus we gotta do these other tasks. So we have time to massage it before the town meeting, if you will. But she needs to know for next week or a week after, whenever the next meeting is, some reasonable justification for the total package of $100,000. And 51 of that would be what we already know, which is what is in Tim's report, as I outlined in my summary here, you know, uh, reinforcing the ceiling and all that kind of stuff. And then throw in a number for architectural services and a number for his report. And if the report comes in at a higher number, so what? You know, I, I have a suggestion because it, we've been at this now for an hour and 45 minutes. And the well, details, are, of, the details are, <laughs> are, are uh, getting a little bit confusing. Yeah. Um, could you, if we do meet on the 12th of January, um, which is next Wednesday, and if you could, um, if you could just uh, outline the monies that are involved here and what they, what you would, what you see them being used for. Uh, we could we would have a motion that we could that we could actually look at and and digest and it's just so, it's, so i think we have it we already, already we already have it i think we have it already joan okay uh all right can you if, if you go to my second presentation about okay. the grant go to the second presentation about the grant go to page number three okay so on page number three, those tasks, the vaulted ceiling, et cetera, et cetera, and those dollars come right out of Tim Wilhita's report. Okay. Word for word, okay. dollar for dollar. They add to $51,000, okay? And then I showed the supplemental repairs, question mark. We don't know what it is. And then after tonight's discussion, we would add another line item that says architectural services. Okay, and we don't know what that number is tonight. So what I would do is I would say, 
all right, I got to get to 100 grand. I got 51 grand there, all right? And I'm going to put a number in for the supplemental repairs, and I'm going to put a number in for the architectural line item. And lo and behold, it adds to $100,000. What a miracle. We have plenty to pick and choose from. So the motion is to request CPA funds for architectural services and supplemental repair and all these other repairs. Well, we need to show a source and the source would be the building survey estimates right. that Tim gave us. Right. right. Okay. And So I think these, and correct me if I'm wrong, Elaine, uh, these CPA funding requests come in two rounds. Right. Well, yeah. So this would be round one, if you will. And I think, I don't want to speak for the CPA committee because I'm not familiar with it, but I think, like I did for a CPA grant for the Agricultural Commission, you can basically throw a ballpark figure out there of what you think it might cost. For the first round. For the first round. Then you got round two. Now you got to get real. Right? If you had soft numbers in round one, you got to firm them up for round two. So at least for round one, this coming 12th or whenever the meeting is, I think we could put in mostly solid numbers, or at least half of the numbers would be solid, and the other half will be soft. And then between now and when the second round is scheduled, whenever that is. Hopefully, we'll have Tim's report should be available mid-February. And hopefully between now and whenever, we can get some kind of an architectural estimate. So in round two, we can say, hey, we really don't need 100 grand. We only need 99,992 cents. Yeah. Well, the motion is to request is to request CPA funds at, this would be at the spring town meeting? Yes. The May town meeting? Yep. Do, do we, do we um, wanna do that or just? Yes. Uh, don't you wanna make a motion to request phase one uh, monies mm -hmm. at, the, at the CPA meeting coming up? No, you can just, no, they can just, um, oh, for the, the, uh, ge uh, general all right, uh, I'm sorry, I'm recommendation all right, and, go and then we go through the steps. I'm sorry. Because I'm the numbers are gonna shift. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so I didn't finish my motion. My I'm motion sorry. is to request CPA funds for for um, architectural services and the recommendations in the Wallhuter survey. Um, as in, amended. In the in the approx as amended. That's right. <laughs> as amended. In the approximate amount of a hundred thousand, that's yep. the motion. Yeah. Okay. Is uh, is there a second? Second. Okay. Janet seconds the motion, and any discussion, any further discussion? Yes. <clears throat> now, what's the round one and round two business? What's that about? It's a, it's a pre-application, and then the final application. That's all that is. Yeah, I didn't Round understand what he was saying at all. Pre and the pre-application is due when? Now, no. it, 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 it's, it's now. Now? Mm -hmm. For the 12th it meeting. Should, it should have been December 1st, but um, yeah. we've got a little wiggle room because we're new yeah. at this. Yeah, and uh, and then the second, the, the second time we deal with it is gonna be when? Um, it's all It's all gonna come together now. It, it's, you know, I'm going to put in a pre-app, but it's, it's going to be, uh, we'll final, I'll we'll finalize the numbers later on when we get the. Well, that's what he's asking. What's yeah. the timing for finalizing um, the numbers? When we get Tim's, the rest of Tim's report. Okay. It, so would, be, it would be probably a month, a month before town meeting, right? That we yeah. Like I, said, I think we're, we're more than that. Well, done by more more than that because it's got to be more than that because the town meeting warrant has to be put together and. January, February, February, roughly. Right. Yeah, we'll we'll likely open uh, well, the warrant in a few we've weeks done. and then close it by 
mid February. Sometimes you're right. There are placeholders in that that get more right. details flushed out because I have seen word articles that say, you know, we're going to do something with tennis courts, and some of those disappear because they don't get the details together by the time we actually print it. But there's now also a CPA process on top of you're doing CPA money, and so that like you have to get through the CPA as well. Right. And they'll have to have theirs done. Um, right. But chances and, and are I think that hundred thousand is going to remain the same. Yep. But the list may mo be modified. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. And and the, the 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 second list is going to be more exact. But exactly. that probably wouldn't greatly affect the town meeting warrant article as long as we have our ducks in line enough. Right. Yeah. All right, because right. I imagine the warrant article that will go to town because you want a town meeting warrant article to have some flexibility in it because there'll be things yeah. you're going to learn even after the warrant right. exactly. exactly. So it's likely to be like for repairs, architectural design, and other costs associated with completing projects as listed in structural surveys done in the last couple of years of the Bullard House. Did you get you know, that, June? <laughs> Did you write that down, June? I have a, let me, I have a skeleton. Let me ask another question. Barry probably could write it even better than I could. Should or, we use should we request that this money be allowed to be used in combination with a grant from the state? Um, well, well that's, 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 that's a good yeah. grant from the state. We can do that on the next round, on the fall round. So that's a good point, Barry. Yeah. But what happens if the town says, yeah, go ahead, and then we don't get the then grant? We don't get the grant. What do we do then? Well, I, way, I, I mean, I don't mean that this be the only thing that we can use it for, but rather that it can also be used. Oh, as, if it's a, if it's a, it's a, if it's another option, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh yeah, but, CPA, so, CPA money can be used. He's not. No, no. he's not saying that. He knows CPA can be used. Yeah, yeah I know that. But what I'm saying is that yeah. when we have the town vote it, do we want to have the town vote? We need the flexibility. Allow it to be used. Yes. As, the town share of a of a of a wider project done with the state's money. Yes. Um, you don't you don't want that to be part of the um, the article. It, only if it, can, only if it's worded that, that can it's be, a possibility. We don't. It's not an absolute. Uh, you know. Yeah, that can be uh, part of the explanation on the town floor. I don't think we'd want to make it a, as an absolute because we don't know how the grant would come out of it. But if we if we were That's to correct. Say, if we have the flexibility, I agree. Okay. It, it's got to be done in a way that said, should such, such a grant be received? Right, okay. yeah. But, right. Because um, it's one of the concerns I've had about trying to do this in round 28 with the money that's already been voted is whether that's going to be acceptable where we didn't have it voted by the town with that possibility. And um, um, But the task is the same, so I... I don't think we're doing anything under the table. We weren't changing the task. The task is the same. We weren't changing the task. We were just postponing it until we knew whether or not we'd get the money. But yeah, and that was the. Flaw. I think if it's I think if it's worded that way and we have the flexibility, that that's yeah. fine. I I just know the kinds of trouble we get into sometimes when something gets voted, and the purpose that we want to use wasn't in the thing that was voted before. And then you're going to go right, back right. to another town meeting. To right, right, that. right, right, right. I just like to make sure that if we want to try to use any of this money as, as the town share of a larger, larger project that we include that so that we don't run into that problem. And we can, yeah. Margaret can advise us a bit on that. And, and also June, the accountant. Okay. So there's been a motion to request CPA funds for architectural services and and specific recommendations in the building survey by Tim Walhuter uh, for the Bullard House in the amount uh, as amended yep. Yep. <laughs> in the amount of one hundred thousand yep. dollars and. We need a second, I think, or have someone already. So oh, Janet already seconded it. Is that right, mm -hmm. Janet? Yeah. I Does it so. matter if my husband's on the CPA committee? Should somebody else second? I don't know. <laughs> no. that, I don't know I, where conflict. I can't is. do it. I'm not. Either. I don't think it's a conflict. I, I mean, I. Well, no, I, I don't can't, think I that is. I'll second that it. Has nothing to do with anything. All right. Okay. Good. All right. So the motion has been seconded, and we need to vote. Uh, Elaine. Yes. Uh, and Carl. Yes. And Janet. Yes. 
and Barry. Yes. And June, yes. So the vote is unanimous. Are there any other motions that we need to consider? Um, I, there's only one thing. I have a question. Um, I can't remember. I'm completely blank. Did we ever vote on Tim Wheeler, uh, Tim Woolheater's um, um, survey that we implement that? Uh, you know, because that's what we've been. That's what we've been using to, to work our way through it. We have, uh, we have, vote, we have voted each thing, each part of it as we come to it. Yeah, it's it's just a. a uh, specific we haven't adopted. You haven't adopted the whole cert. We haven't That's done the correct. whole. Cert. No, we didn't. Is this the one that um, yeah. Elaine that that I don't have? That's right. Right. That's correct. So I'll, I'll email. I'll one. correct that uh, before I go to bed. <laughs> oh, no. I'll send you an electronic copy. Yeah. <laughs> but in the meantime, I probably wouldn't want to vote on something I haven't seen. Right. Yeah. 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 No, well, I just couldn't done, remember. We've done parts of it already, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any other issues? We, we pretty much limited this meeting to this, uh, to I, I don't, 28 I, and 9. I, I don't have an issue, any issues, but I think it might be appropriate that we discuss who's going to get the action items to do what and when. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff hanging out there. Uh, we got to go come up with a list of architects for one thing. Uh, I guess the board needs to be notified that we're not going to go forward with it at this time, around 28. And despite that, I think either through Margaret or someone has to be assigned an action item to stop looking into, so we're ready for round 29 those things for which we as a commission don't have control over, the preservation agreement, the procurement requirement, those sort of things. I think we need to, so they don't get lost, we need okay. to identify action items that need I, to be accomplished. I can certainly communicate with Margaret that we, um, that round tw the motion to support round 28 failed. Um, you, will, you might find, sorry, you might find you that's already been done. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> you have a select board member here who has her ear sometimes. So I, okay. I have informed her already. Okay. Um, I'll inform the select board at Monday's meeting. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. And the action item, I'm tired. Tell me what the, uh, the second. I, I'm, I'm really okay. concerned right now about trying to take other actions tonight when we've got another meeting a week from now. Um, I think there's some things we ought to try to find out. One of the things that we've got to face is whether Margaret's going to be available to help us at what kind of a date. Is it going to, I mean, and I know we can't get that answer quickly, but at the same time, I'm a little bit concerned of how far we can go without somebody like her. Yeah, I'm, I'm not suggesting that, I'm not suggesting we start the tasks today or tomorrow. I'm just suggesting that we need to somehow document succinctly that there are action items outstanding just by giving the names of them and who we think should address them at some point in the future so it doesn't get lost in the... Okay. Yeah. Why don't we work on that list of action items so that everybody can look at it together at our next me our meeting a week from now? Um, I may have a conflict. Um, I'll get your thoughts before if you have to go to another meeting. Uh, Fine. You want to postpone it? Fine. Um, I think, you know, you discussed earlier these, these action items. I mean, it's the preservation restriction. It's the design selection. We can get copies of the preservation restrictions that are normally done with the MHC on this kind of a grant from them. There is one, right? I may have some somewhere in a file. I'll look around. Uh, excuse me, Barry. You, you, I would suggest you use the current one. It's an appendix. It's an appendix in the current grant, just to make sure, you know, these things have a tendency to change. So I would just point out, for example, that in appendix, give me a minute to get to the, to the 66 pages here. 
So we already have that in hand? Yes. A sample? Yeah. It's in the, okay. it's in the, it's in the grant. It's in the grant. It's in the form of an appendix. Oh, gosh. There it is. So the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, there's a, uh, okay, here it is. Appendix D, as in David, is the preservation restriction agreement sample. And there's other things too that we haven't addressed, but somebody has to look at. Appendix E is a certification of authorization examples. So that's another board, select board or Margaret's task that has to be looked at because I don't think we have the authority to do that. Can, uh, I'd like to move that we prepare this list this week and, um, some, and go over it just so that we all understand all the moving pieces and yeah, submit yeah. it um, I'll, after I'll, the 12th. I'll take a shot at it if you'd like and I can send it to you, Joan. Yep, that would be fine. Um, is there a second to that motion? What was the motion again? <laughs> I don't think we have to vote it, do we? Do we have to vote it? I, mean, I don't I'm, think we do. I don't, I, I don't think we do. Okay, it's the action item to identify the select yeah. board's responsibilities that are outside our jurisdiction. As well as ours. As, as well, well as we do need to do. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we agree on that. All right. Okay, it is now 9.03 and I need a motion to adjourn. A move. Okay, I'll thank you, everybody. All right. Good night. You need to Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Oh, we need, we need to vote to adjourn, I guess. Hey, Garai. Elaine. 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 Thank you, Scott. Yeah.